Assalamualaikum students. This is Salareb, your accounting teacher. Guys, today we are going to discuss about ledger and its type. This topic is for those students who are beginners and they have just started studying accounting for O-levels. In fact, this lecture is also helpful for those students who want to start accounting for O-levels. And this would be beneficial as a basic subject or a basic topic for them, right? So let's start with that. Today, we are going to talk about ledger and its type. Before that, we started off with T accounts. We talk about transactions earlier. We talk about accounts and the types of accounts. I just give you a little a recap what we had discussed in our previous lecture. I told you that the business performs the activities which are called transactions. All these transactions are grouped in similar transactions called accounts. Let me repeat that. A business performs different activities. They are called transactions. And all the similar transactions, when they are grouped together, they are called accounts. So that means to say that all the similar transactions related to cash are recorded into cash account. All the similar transactions of bank are recorded into bank account. All the transactions related to sales are recorded into sales account. All the transactions related to purchases are recorded in purchases account, so on, so on. That means that all the similar transactions related are recorded in an account and we name it as a cash account, bank account, sales, purchase, rent account, insurance account, et cetera, et cetera. Now, these accounts are basically the groups. And I told you earlier that accounts are of two types or they are prepared in two ways. The first is the account and the second is called running balance account. Right? That means to say that accounts can be maintained in two ways, a T account or a running balance account. Now, mostly, and most of the businesses use T account and it is basically examined in your O and A levels. However, only the bank use a running balance account. The complete detail can be seen, can be watched in my previous lecture with the name of accounts and its types. So get back to the a topic as we were discussing about the ledgers. So I told you that all these accounts are basically the group of similar transactions. And these accounts must be prepared in a book. These accounts must be prepared in a book. And that book is known as ledger. So let's talk about our today's topic, what we were talking about. A ledger is traditionally a bound book where each account appears on a separate page. That means to say that ledger is basically a book in which all the accounts are maintained on separate page. A business maintains a ledger account for each type of assets, liabilities, revenues, expense, and capital, right? For example, if a business maintains a cash account, it has to prepare in a book. And that book is called ledger. Now, in your paper, in your question, they may ask you to prepare an account in a ledger. This is mo the most important thing which you need to remember that mostly they ask you prepare an account in the books or in the ledger. Prepare an account in the ledger. They normally give you, the examiner normally gives you this type of question. For that, we will discuss later in our 
uh, later chapters or later topics. Let's continue with ledger. So ledger is basically a bound book in which the accounts are maintained. Now there are many accounts, countless accounts that are maintained in a, ca in a business like cash, bank, sales, purchase, uh, provision for doubtful debt, rent, depreciation, depreciation of uh, machinery, depreciation of uh, uh, motor vehicles, et cetera, et cetera, rent, insurance. So there are countless accounts which are maintained by the business. Therefore, the business has actually bifurcated the ledger into three different parts. They are called types of ledger. In your paper, they may tell you the division of ledger, or they may ask subdivisions of the ledger. Mostly they ask you the division of ledgers or the types of ledgers. So ledgers are basically classified into three types. The first is called sales ledger. The second is called purchase ledger. And the third is called nominal ledger or the general ledger. So let's discuss about what type of accounts are in sales ledger. Now, as you know, my dears, that we have a business has lot of customers. A business, a business sales goods on credit to many customers. And when they are on credit terms, a business has to record each customer's account separately. For example, if a business is selling goods on credit to Mr. A, it has to make Mr. A's account separately so that it gets to know how much sales a business has made and how much amount has been received. Finally, how much amount is still receivable. Then if business has made Mr. B's account, it means Mr. B has been given or sold goods on credit. Then a business also, pay, for example, it sells or sold goods on credit to Mr. C as well. So it has to make Mr. C's account as well. So there are plenty of trade receivables. There are plenty of credit customers a business has and business has to make their separate account. So what it does basically, a business prepares all these credit customers account in sales ledger. That means to say all the trade receivables, all the credit customers accounts are actually made in a separate book, which is called sales ledger. So a sales ledger contains all the trade receivables or credit customers account. Now, please remember that there is a huge difference between sales journal and sales ledger. Many students get confused in sales journal and sales ledger. Sales journal is a book of prime entry or a book of original entry in which the business records credit sales. All the credit sales are recorded in books of prime entry. Whereas sales ledger itself, the name is given. It's a ledger in which the business records all the accounts of trade receivable. So don't get confused. This has to be kept in mind. The second we have is purchase ledger. A purchase ledger contains all the accounts of trade payables. Likewise, the business sales goods on credit, the same way the business purchases goods on credit as well. And when a business purchases goods from its suppliers, those suppliers are known as trade payables or credit suppliers. So for example, if Mr. If, if the business has purchased goods on credit from Mr. X, then Mr. X's account would be maintained 
then from Mr. Y, Mr. Y's account will be maintained. From Mr. Z, Mr. Z's account will be maintained. So a business has to prepare the credit supplier's account in a separate book. So, so that all the individual supplier's account can be maintained and a business gets to know how much amount has to be paid to Mr. X, Y, or Z. For this, the business has to prepare purchase ledger account. So please remember that sales ledger is used to prepare all the trade receivables accounts and the purchase ledger is used for all the credit suppliers or trade payables accounts. Again, there is a difference between purchases journal and purchases ledger. Guys, if you have not watched my previous lectures, you may not be able to differentiate between the sales ledger and sales journal and purchase journal and purchase ledger. So please, you need to watch the previous lectures as well. Anyways, let's move on. So again, purchase journal is a book of prime entry in which we record or a business records credit purchases. Purchase ledger itself is a ledger in which the business records all the accounts of trade payables, the credit suppliers. The last but not least is the nominal ledger. The last but not least is the nominal ledger. A nominal ledger or a general ledger is a book in which all the accounts of assets, liabilities, capital, expense, and revenue are maintained, except trade receivables, and trade payables. For example, you know that all the assets contain premises, land, building, trade receivable, cash, bank, all these are your assets. Among these assets, all these assets accounts are maintained in nominal ledger except trade receivable. Why? Because the trade receivable account is already maintained in sales ledger. In the same manner, all the liabilities accounts are maintained in nominal ledger except the trade payables because trade payables accounts are maintained in purchase ledger. And then all the expenses account, revenue account and capital accounts are maintained in nominal ledger. So there are three types of ledger, sales ledger, which is used for trade receivable, purchase ledger, which is used for trade payables and nominal ledger in which all the accounts are maintained except sales ledger and purchase ledger. I hope it is clear to you. All right, guys. So earlier we discussed about ledger and its type. And I told you that ledger is a bound book in which all the accounts are maintained. And there are three types of ledger, sales ledger for trade receivables, purchase ledger for trade payables, and nominal or general ledger for all the accounts except trade receivables and trade payables. Now, I'm going to start off with the preparation of a T account, how a business prepares a T account. Earlier, I also told you that most of the businesses use T account format for the preparation of all the accounts. However, in your paper as well, we have only the T account to be maintained. Uh, they don't ask you to prepare the running balance account. So let's start. How do businesses prepare T accounts or how do accounts are maintained? First of all, you need to remember that business prepares accounts of similar transactions. Here, I am going to make a T account of bank. It means to say all the similar transactions related to bank are going to be recorded in this account. This is T account. It is in the form of T. Right, so this is actually T account. Now, remember the left hand side of T account is the debit side, and the right side of T account is called credit side. Now, you already know, guys, what is debit or what is credit. It is already discussed in our previous lecture. 
the left side of this t account is called debit side and the right side is called credit side now this is a very simple format however there are some bifurcation as well and what are those five bifurcations let me discuss those bifurcations with you here first of all a, this particular t account has date the details of transaction and the amount. However, all these things are not written when it, it when they prepare a simple T account. Again, on the debit side, the detail, the dates, details, and the amount. In fact, in your paper, when they ask you to prepare a T account and they have not given you any format, you can only use these dollar signs. That's it. You don't need to make date and details account. However, the dates and details must be written regarding the transaction. How is it? I'll let you know. So what are we going to make? Today, we are going to talk about the preparation of a bank account. How a bank account is prepared. So that means to say, we are going to talk about all the transactions of bank. And you know that the bank transaction includes the checks received and checks paid. Secondly, all the transactions, all the amount which is received in the bank are going to be recorded and all the amount recorded which we have paid through the bank are going to be recorded in your bank account. So, Remember, a bank includes the amount received in the bank and the amount paid through the bank. So let's discuss about how do we prepare it. See, this is a simple transaction. The left-hand side is debit, the right-hand side is credit. A date, detail, and the amount is written on the left-hand side. The date, detail, and amount, of amount is written on the right-hand side. How? Remember, a bank is basically an asset. It's a current asset. And if you know the rules of debit and credit, you should know that whenever the bank increases, whenever the bank increases, it is recorded on debit side. Whatever the transaction which increases the bank is going to be recorded on debit side. Whatever the transaction which decreases the bank account the amount in the bank is recorded on the credit side. So we have to record the transaction through which the bank has increased or the bank has decreased, right? So this is basically the particular way you need to prepare the T account. For example, the first transaction is, let me tell you the first transaction. I'm just reading it for you, for example, right? Now, for example, that the owner has invested an amount of 100,000 in the bank. Invested in the bank, it means the owner has just started the business and he has invested an amount directly in the bank. So from business point of view, the transaction would be bank would be recorded on debit side and capital would be recorded on credit side. It means this transaction has affected two different items. One is bank and the second is capital. All these things have already been discussed. You need to please, you need to see all the previous topics. You need to watch all the previous topics so that you will be able to understand the T account. So bank has been debited and capital has been credited. Why? Because when the amount has been deposited in the bank, the business bank account has increased. So bank has been debited against capital because the capital is there. So we are going to record on the debit side. How, for example, the day is July 1st, 2021. July 1st, 2021, the bank amount has been debited by 100,000. See, the bank amount has been recorded on the debit side, which shows that 100,000 has increased in our bank account. 
So 100,000 has been debited. However, in details, we write the cross reference here. Please don't get confused that here we are going to write the cross reference of our transaction. Why this amount has been debited to 100,000 against the capital because the owner has invested. Right? Let me tell you another transaction. Another transaction is, for example, the owner has paid rent of $2,000 through bank. So when the rent is paid, the transaction would be rent is debited and bank has been credited. Now, why the bank has been credited here? Because bank has decreased. The amount has been paid from the bank. So the bank has decreased. So now the transaction would be here. Let's say this is on July 2nd, 2021. So the transaction is bank has been credited by 2000. The transaction has been done, but against what? In details, we write the cross reference against rent. So if anyone sees it, if the owner sees this account, he will get to know that the bank has been decreased because you paid against the rent. So this is why in cross reference, we always write rent. Please remember, don't get confused that the rent is credited here. No, the rent is not credited. The account is credited against rent. Now, the question also arises here. Sir, what about this rent account? Do we need to prepare the account? Yes. For this transaction, another account related to rent would have been made. But we are not discussing about that. We are making only one account. Otherwise, every transaction has two effects. So the, every transaction can be recorded in two different accounts, all right? Sometimes it can only be in two different assets accounts. Remember this, okay? So let's continue. We are only talking about the bank account here. Then again, let's say there is another transaction on July 3rd, the business paid against the purchases. The business purchased goods through bank on cash and they paid it through bank. So the transaction would be purchases has been debited and bank has been credited. Why? Because the bank has paid through bank. So we'll, we'll, we'll record it on the credit side that the bank has been credited by 1000 because we paid through bank against purchases. In the same way, let's say the business sold goods on cash, the amount was deposited into the bank. Directly, it was deposited into the bank. So I could say that the business had sold good and received the amount in the bank. So here, the bank has increased. So it has been recorded. It should be recorded on debit side. So how are we going to write it? On July 4th, the amount has been debited by 3000 that the bank has increased by 3,000 against sales. Let's discuss about another transaction. I would give you further few more transactions so that you would be able to understand. Then the business also paid, or uh, pay, let's say the business paid for insurance through bank. So when the insurance has been paid, insurance has been debited and bank has been reduced so it was credited. So on July 7, the bank has been credited by 500 against insurance. Let's say the business paid for wages on July 28. So wages had been debited and bank would be credited. So bank has been credited by 16,000 against wages. So for example, for the whole month, the business has done only these transactions, though there are plenty of transactions of bank in only one day. So how about one, uh, one month? It would be many transactions. However, just to make you understand, 
I have just given you a few transactions. So let's say by 28th of July, the business has done all the transactions. So now this is the time to get to know how much amount have we received, how much have we paid, and what is the balance which is left in our bank. In other words, beta, every month we are going to close this account. How the closing is done. To close this account, you need to be very careful. What you do, you leave one line where many transactions or where, are they, where there are plenty of transactions. On credit side, we have more transactions than on debit side. So we leave one line here and we make a mark or we get the grand total sign here. In front of the same here, in front of the same, on debit side, we would write the so they should it should always be on equal row okay now we need to see after making this particular grand total sign we need to see which side is larger obviously the debit side is larger here so when we talk about when we take the total of it the grand total of debit side is 100 or 1 lakh 3000 103000 or 100 1 lakh 3000 Remember, when you make the grand total, it should always be equal. We need to balance the T account. So remember that both the sides should be equal. And how can we make the e sign of equal here? See, this is the larger amount on debit side. What we will do, we will write the same on credit side. We will write the same on credit side to make it balanced. But the question arises here, sir, the, there, it's not balanced. When we take the total of this account, the, bal the amount would be different. And what should, that, what should that amount be? If you please take the grand total, you will get to know the answer. We have 16,000 plus 2,000 plus 1,000 plus 500. The total is 19,500. The grand total of credit side is 19,500. So what we will do from those 19,500, we will minus 1,3,000. So the balance is 83,500 is what we have left with. So we will write here 83,500. And now when you total it, this will be definitely be your grand total of 1,3,000. What is this amount basically? Better, this is basically the closing balance according to accounting transaction. We call it as closing balance. What does closing balance means? Better, the closing balance means this is the balance which is left at the end of the month and it has to be carried forward or carried down to the next month. I repeat, this is the amount which is left for this month. And this amount has to be carried forward to the next month. So this is basically known as balance CD. And it is always done at the last day of the month. So which is 31st of July. So your balance carried down is 83,500. And this 83,500 will be your next month balance brought down. So after July, we have August 1st, 2021. And this would be your balance BD. This would be your balance BD. I hope this is clear to you. Remember that the difference of balance BD and balance CD is balance CD is the closing balance of the, the current month and balance BD is the opening balance of the new month or the next month. So now the business, what does it, in, what does it mean basically? It means that for the whole month of July, the bank received 1,3,000. And it paid 19,500. And now the bank is left with 83,500 in the bank. So this is how 
all the accounts are maintained and they are closed. And every after every month, there is a balance CD and the next month it would be carried down as with the name of balance BD. I hope this is clear to you. So today we discussed about ledger and its type. And I also told you how to prepare a T account. If you need to ask anything, please you may write on comments, ask me. I, in, the next, uh, in the next lecture, I'm going to prepare a T account along with the questions. We are going to uh, take any of the question as an example and we'll make different T accounts and then we'll balance it. So if you like this lecture, please share this lecture with other people, subscribe it and do like it. Thank you, take care, Allah Hafiz.